Hello everybody and welcome to Storm Raids and today I'm going to be doing a book review. I've decided that I'm going to try to do book reviews with some of the ARCs or E-ARCs that I've got, especially um, the ARC ones that I get. And so I've decided to do one for Spell for a Lost Things by Jenna Evans Welch. And this is a young adult contemporary, and I'm going to say contemporary or over contemporary romance because I really don't think there was a lot of romance involved in this. Though there was a bit of an insta attraction and things like that, it didn't really go into too much romance. Um, so I think it's more of a contemporary and with a little bit of whimsical magic type things in it, I, it, it, was, it was fun. <laughs> and... I don't read a lot like this, and this is the first time I've read anything from this author. So it's told in two point of views, and so one of the point of views is Willow, and Willow is a teen who, she kind of feels a bit lost. Her parents have divorced, and it seems like as soon as they've divorced, her mom threw herself into her work, so she doesn't, she no longer has a dad nearby, like he has, and he's started his own new family, and he has triplets that he's dealing with. Her mother has also went headlong into her event uh, planning type. I think it is event planning that she does. Anyway, she's headlong into that and she's always busy with that and doesn't seem to ever have any time for Willow. And so Willow is just kind of feeling a little bit misplaced and lost a little bit and she just doesn't understand a lot of the stuff that's happening. One thing she knows is she can't wait to graduate so that she can travel. She is, as soon as it's time for her to get out of there, she is gone. She is going to just travel the world and do her thing. That is what she wants to do. She's not quite sure how she's going to achieve that, but it is what she wants to do. She has like a whole plan. She has really been mapping this kind of a thing out. That is kind of her thing. And one day, um, her mom gets a letter and it pretty much upends everything because she finds out that her mother had a twin sister that she never even knew about. So Willow never even knew that this woman existed because her mother put the past in the past and it was gone. She even changed her name to something different. Not too different because she was Rosemary but now she's Mary and her sister's name was Sage. And her name is Willow. Do we see something going on here? <laughs> and um, they used to live in Salem. And she had no clue that her mother ever lived in Salem. But now they've got to go back because of the death of her sister. She has acquired their house. The, the big house that their aunts had. Her Aunt Daisy, I think, had this house. And they were raised there and they lived there with their Aunt Daisy and they have three, she has three very eccentric great aunts <laughs> named, let's see, Poppy, Violet, Marigold, <laughs> I believe. And they were so fun. They were probably some of my favorite parts of this story. And so she just doesn't, I mean, Willow has no clue what to think about all this because all of a sudden, she has found out that her mother has this whole other life that she knew nothing about. And so she is really interested in trying to figure this out, especially because her great aunts are, um, are witches, or so they say. You know, like I said, it's Salem, so you never know. Very eccentric. Um, they do spell casting and things like that. And so there's a little bit of that in there. And uh, she's kind of really curious about this. She especially feels drawn to the house. Her mother wants her to have nothing to do with it. She doesn't even want her to go in the house. She doesn't want anything to do with it. She's just going to find a realtor and sell the house and be done with it. She doesn't want to talk about her past. She doesn't want to talk to Willow about it. So, of course, naturally, being a teenager, she is going to try to figure things out on her own, especially when one of the great aunts hands her a key. <laughs> so, of course, you know. And so then the other point of view is Mason. And Mason is a young man who is in the foster care system. And he 
has to do with the fact that his mother is an addict and is always an addict and they're just um even though he knows that there's probably no hope for her he always has hope for her because it's his mother but it seems like the foster care system has lost his mother because they can't figure out where she's gone like she has just gone off the face of the earth she was supposed to have went into rehab and then they they have no clue like what happened to her so mason is trying to find his mother but uh he has to kind of go wherever the foster uh the social workers and stuff like that put him so he ends up being fostered in salem so he has to go to salem because there is a lady there named emma who used to know his mother he's not quite sure how he feels about that because it's just weird staying with somebody that knew his mother but that he feels if you knew my mother why didn't you help my mother kind of a thing and i will admit his his story was a little bit of a downer <laughs> and i kind of found his parts at the beginning of this to be quite boring but he is a kid who likes um, stars and astrology and um i think he wants to learn something called like astrophysics or something like that he's really into that he's a stargazer he has a notebook that he carries with him and that he writes down his thoughts about stars and things and he's been also writing down some things about how he feels about his mother and things like that in his stargazing notebook and he is so ang anxious and has anxiety about his notebook like he carries it everywhere he goes he doesn't want anybody to get their hands on it he doesn't want it to get lost all that kind of stuff so he always has it with him and so He's headed to Salem. Willow's headed to Salem. Do we see something happen in here? So, they meet up uh, on accident at uh, Willow's uh, great aunt's or whatever. The house, or Sage's house, I guess it was kind of Sage's house, that they're selling. She wants to check it out. So, she goes there at night. He knew about the house because his uh, foster father is a realtor and so he sees that the rooftop looks like a really great place to like stargaze so of course that's kind of where they bump into each other and then from then they kind of they kind of form a friendship but there's like really that instant attraction of like oh my goodness he's so cute oh my goodness she's so pretty type of thing but there wasn't really like a full out like romance romance or anything like that so that's why I call it like a contemporary. But it gets a lot more interesting, at least Mason does, when they, she meets Willow. I just found the stuff about the witches and Willow's side a lot more interesting than I did Mason's. Now, Mason's story does have a pull at your heartstring moment towards the end, which kind of impacts him, his side of the story. It's a little bit more it makes him a little bit more interesting, but honestly, I just really preferred Willow over Mason. And I did, I liked the story, I did, but like they didn't meet until like we were like way here, you know, so like we've read like half the story and I, or over half, and I'm like, when are they gonna meet? <laughs> when they're supposed to meet and like figure things out, when's it gonna happen? So that's why I said it's more like a contemporary and somebody had told me that that's kind of how this author writes and like I said I this is my first book from this author but I know she's very popular and I know a lot of people like her I find that the story flowed really well um, I read it off and on and I probably could have finished it pretty early if I would have just stuck with it but I just read it here and there but when I, I had oh, I probably had uh, at least a quarter of the book to go like towards the end of September and I just stuck with it that one day and like finished the book so I mean it was not hard to finish if I would have just stuck with it but you know like I do I read a lot of books at the same time so I do feel like her writing style it, it flows really well and I did find the characters interesting, but like I think I liked the great ants probably the most out of the whole story. They were a lot of fun. And I liked Willow a bit more than I did Mason, but I did like Mason, don't get me wrong. I just liked the Willow part of it. 
and I think if you're more interested in the witchy side of things, it, it was just a more interesting plotline than Mason being the foster kid and his plotline, I guess. But overall, I liked it. I would try this author again. I know, I think she's the author of, is it called Love and Other Things or something like that. I know it's like she's got like the love and gelato and things like that. But so I've heard of her. I just I've just never tried her before. But I give it 3.5 stars. It's my own personal rating. But I will probably give it four stars on Goodreads because I did enjoy it. I, I wasn't like super bored with it or anything like that. So I did enjoy it. And I think if you like this author's other books and you like things with like light kind of witchy things in it and things like that you like the two POVs and stuff and you like one that's more contemporary than it is romance then you will enjoy this so I did get this for review as an art from Simon and Schuster so thank you Simon and Schuster for allowing me to review this book and if you've read this book let me know what you thought about it in the comments or if I piqued your interest a little bit let me know in the comments and I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye.